This video will show dentists how they can save 5 to 10 minutes of chair time by proceeding from prepared tooth to finished restoration with little to no shaping, finishing, adjusting, or polishing. Hard to believe? Just watch. We're going to place a class 2 light cured composite on tooth number 31. In this demonstration, using a clear custom matrix technique that will save the dentist and the patient 5 to 10 minutes of chair time on every composite that they place. We have just anesthetized the patient in this demonstration and we're going to place a matrix band on this tooth as we would later on in the procedure and tighten this as we normally would. No wedge is needed at this time. We then take a clear bite registration material in a cartridge and inject that onto the tooth, moving the tip through the grooves as we inject and then around the where the band meets the tooth. Now notice when I take that away from the tooth, I leave a surface that is not smooth and cannot have even pressure placed on it. So I now take a mylar strip and lightly place that mylar strip on this unset composite or unset clear bite registration material and there's six available on the market. There's no proprietary material needed for, for this technique. And we're going to allow this to set in the mouth which usually takes about 45 seconds to a minute. Outside of the mouth it's going to take longer so we're going to just stop for just a moment while this sets up and then we'll remove this custom matrix and show it to you. The clear bite registration material is now set and we're now going to remove that from the mouth. By the time this usually sets, the patient has not gained anesthesia enough for us to even start, so we have not lost any chair time. The mylar strip comes easily off as well as the matrix band. Now, this little matrix has a tremendous amount of surface detail information trapped in its surface. This is now going to be used as a die to reform the unset composite before I cure it, and then I will cure through this, curing in the original anatomy, surface texture, and occlusion that this patient was comfortable with when they walked into the operatory. Here's the custom matrix that we're going to use later on in a procedure. You can usually place this on the bracket table until it's needed after you place the last increment of composite. We've now cut our cavity preparation the way we normally do, and you can place any liners or bases as you care to. You're then going to replace the matrix band that was placed on the tooth when you took the custom matrix impression at the beginning of the appointment, and tighten that the way you normally do. We're now going to take a wedge and wedge this the way you normally do. Now I'm doing this with a Toffelmeyer matrix band. The same thing can be done with a sectional matrix. If you take your custom matrix impression adjacent to the sectional matrix earlier in the procedure. Now when I place class 2 uh, light cured composites, I use at least two increments. The first increment is used to get the contact. And if I place a small amount of com composite into the proximal box, I'll condense that to make sure that it's well condensed and there's no voids. And then I'm going to take an instrument called the Contact Pro. And this is what it looks like. And as a mesial and distal end, I'm going to place this instrument into the mesial box and pull, as it notes here. And then I take a flat end of the light curing bundle and light cure through the instrument, curing in a bridge of composite, going up the side of the, the matrix band, holding the matrix band in place into contact. After this is cured, I'll try to show you this small little bridge. It's somewhat difficult to see. But this will hold the matrix band in the contact 
while I place, in this case, my last and final increment of composite. So if you look real closely, you might be able to see a small bridge of composite coming up the side of the matrix band. And that helps hold the matrix band into place, into contact, while I'm placing my last and final layer of composite. Now if there's any trick to the clear custom matrix technique for composites, it's only placing a slight excess of composite as your last increment. Dentists, and myself included, have been taught to place more composite than we need and then grind away the excess. With this technique, you don't want to have a lot of excess because that will simply be flash. So that's what I'm doing right now. I am removing some of the composite here. And now I'm going to replace the custom matrix that was sitting right over here or that you may have placed on your bracket table. The trick here is to loosen the matrix band a couple of turns so that you can place this clear custom matrix inside the matrix band. And this needs to sit entirely inside the matrix band. And you may need to force it in, but once it's in, and you may also want to check it on the lingual with a mirror, make certain that it's completely inside the matrix band. Then you're going to place your finger on that, place pressure on it while you retighten the matrix band the way you normally had it tightened earlier in the procedure. I'm putting about five to ten pounds or five pounds of pressure on my finger for five to ten seconds, forcing the composite into its original shape and texture with the same occlusion that the patient was comfortable with when they walked in the operatory. Now I'm going to take the flat end of the light curing bundle, match it up with the flat surface created by the mylar strip earlier in the procedure. Maintain pressure on this while I cure through it, curing and setting the composite with the original anatomy, occlusion, and surface texture that the patient was comfortable with and without an air-inhibited layer. Now I've just cured the composite enough such that when I remove the custom matrix, the surface is hard and smooth and it will not stick to the custom matrix. But I want to show you what this looks like with no polishing, no finishing, and no adjusting. I'm going to take off the matrix band and the wedge and show you that we have very smooth surface here. If you can see this sliding across the surface. I slide up. There's hardly any catch at any of the margins. I have a nice rounded marginal ridge. I have essentially saved myself any adjustment, finishing, and, and polishing of this restoration. I would check the occlusion with articulating paper and I'm almost 99% sure this patient will now get up and walk out. Except I need to do one more thing. I have to make certain that I cure this again because I'm not certain that I got enough light energy through the custom matrix to completely cure it. So I cure it again for 20 seconds, the manufacturer's recommended time. And then the patient gets up and walks out. Can you imagine placing a posterior composite? And after you get through light curing, there is no finishing, adjusting, shaping, polishing. Hard to believe, isn't it? I'm going to try to show you, give you a close-up view of this if I can. Imagine you can do this type of surface anatomy, occlusion, and surface texture 